In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Well, in my uh, previous previous voice, I talked about uh, second language acquisition and universal grammar. The, uh, I only introduced uh, uh, the discussion. Now I want to go to the first discussion, which is uh, the purity of monolingual argument. Well, let us read everything that is there. Line 1 says, according to the separation of competence from performance. Actually, actually we talked about uh, competence and performance in chapter 1. We said that the ability is the competence. And uh, if you use this ability to talk or you listen or listen, this is your performance. So competence is your ability to talk and performance is... Uh, uh, your actual talking, your actual, in fact, uh, listening, okay, these two types of things, listening and talking, or writing, no difference. Well, which we, ta we talked in chapter one, and you remember. Well, the book says, according to the separation of competence from performance discussed in chapter one, well, linguistic theory is concerned with an ideal speaker-listener, completely homogeneous speech community. Okay, what does it mean? Well, Chomsky and linguistics talks about a, a community of people talking one type of language with one language. Okay, with one language. Well, for example, well, suppose that there is one city, there is one city like Baghdad, like Tehran, then the, in this language, in this city, or the, in this community, there is only one language. Everybody talks that language. Let us say that in Iraq, in Baghdad, it is uh, well. They talk uh, Arabic, and in Tehran, they talk, let's say, Farsi. Okay, or in New York they talk in American English, or in London they talk in British English. Okay, well, uh, one community with one language. Okay, well, line three says something like this a community with more than one language, or indeed more than one dialect, would not be homogeneous. Okay, suppose in Baghdad there are Kurds, there are Arabs, there are Turks, etc. etc. I'm talking about languages, okay? I'm talking about languages, not people, okay? So, uh, if there are three languages spoken there, it is not good. If you have got one language, it is good. So let us say that in Tehran and let's say in Baghdad they talk about, they talk in one language. This is the best, according to the first discussion here. So a community with more than one language, with two languages, with three languages, or indeed with more than one dialect, would not be homogeneous. Well, homogeneous is important. Well, because they talk three different languages, this is not good. The language of a mixed community would not be pure, okay, in the relevant sense of Chomskyan approach, okay? Because, line one, two, three, four, five, six, because it would not represent a single set of choices among the options permitted by UG but rather would include contradict contradictory choices. So remember, one language is pro-drop, pro another language is non-pro-drop. One language can put the, the, the WH at the beginning, another language could put it in anywhere in the sentence. You remember, okay? So, Line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of this paragraph says, the idealization of the competence reduces it 
to knowledge of a monolingual native speaker okay so if you have got one language this is the best but if you have got two languages you have got one mind with two languages this is bad see the following sentence says describing a mind with two grammars is too complicated muakkada muakkada okay it is vital to simplify the discussion to a mind with a single grammar why it is it is not muakkada muakkada okay well one mind with one language this is the whole thing that we want to talk about in 6.1 so people would like to say that or in fact scholars would like to say that an idealized mind monolingual is the best with what the best if you have got two languages maybe it is more complicated maybe it is the result of let's say we understand that uh, this is a combination when, when when they want to talk one language they actually talk about talk in another language okay it is the good position of interference etc etc interference of one language upon another okay so we say that one mind with one language it is the best according to this discussion okay so the last line of this paragraph actually talks about uh, well the native speaker with one single grammar this is the best okay going to the next page okay you go to page 222 well the idea is something like this uh, uh, after the after the first line uh, after the first uh, quotation we have line two okay beginning with for the benefits of readers without knowledge of uh, u.s geography charles rivers divided boston from cambridge well just look at this line this can be called this can be called line two this can be called the purity argument what does it mean one language not two two languages not pure okay for using monolinguals an idealized mind with one language possesses a purer state of no language knowledge than a mind with two or more okay so what happens here if you have got two languages it is like like this go to the next paragraph like one two three four line, four lines to the bottom okay we say that a second language is effectively an extra tact on the on on to the first language what is it suppose i've got a nice car i've got a nice car I want to in fact travel from, from one city to another city suppose that I want to have something like a safari safari okay when you have a safari you go to let's say jungles you go to the mountains and you want to sleep there in your car okay but it is difficult for your car to have something like something like a, a a little house with bedroom with many things like that what do you do what do you do you put something like a caravan at the end of your car okay and you pull the caravan with your car to that place okay so it means that when i have got, when i want another when i want to travel and actually i've got two things my car and the caravan at the end this is an extra okay what does it mean i want i have one car with one extra at the end of it something extra at the end of it what is it that car that caravan well when i want to take a rest when i want to sleep at night i go to the caravan when i want to tr 
take continue traveling from city to city from nice places to another nice place I actually I am in my own car okay so language two is like this caravan at the end of your car okay what does it mean? You have got a car, you have something extra. This is what we mean by, well, extra and extra tact onto the first language. So, it's a comparison. A car with a caravan, the first language with a second language, these are the same. So, what is the best? The best is the first language, not the second language. I'm done with this discussion. Let us go to let us go to the second discussion. Well, the universal bilingualism. Well, simply the second idea is against the first idea. No, no, no. The second idea the, the second idea says the first idea is wrong. Let us go to the second idea. What is it? Universal bi bilingualism. Universal bilingualism says no, no to purity of, purity of the monolingual argument. What does it mean? If you have got two languages, this is the best. Let us see. Well, nice ideas in this chapter are presented for you. Well, let us go to this line, this kind of idea. Alongside the, uh, the purity argument, there is nevertheless a rec recognition that many, or indeed all minds, contain more than one language. Contain more than one language. Suppose that in the capital city of Baghdad, there are Kurds. And actually they live there because this is their country okay but because they are originally from the northern parts of Iraq they are native speakers of Kurdish native speakers of Kurdish and now they live in Baghdad what do they do they have got two languages Arabic they talk Arabic all over when they are talking when they are uh, in fact uh, on the street doing businesses actually in the offices etc etc but they are when they are back home they have got another language Kurdish okay the book says that having two languages at the same time is better than one language let us continue with the discussion line two. Well, whatever the language faculty is, it can assume many different states in parallel. Okay? So one language and another language. Okay? So Chomsky, page 2000, okay, page 59, Chomsky 2000, page 59, says something like this. Okay, line three. Chomsky has made commands to the effect that people effectively have more than one grammars in their mind. Okay? Every person is mutually multilingual in in a more than one in a more technical sense. Well, even you are bilinguals. Why? If you only speak Arabic, you have got two types of Arabics available to you. Okay? One Arabic is the local Arabic that you talk. Let us say, uh, Iraqi Lahja. Okay? And at the same time, you have got another language. Okay? Another language. What is that? What is that? It is your Fosha, you are able to talk two languages at the same time. Okay? And at the same time, the Kurds are able to talk Arabic of Iraq and, let us say, 
Kurdish two languages. Many places around the world are like this. Okay. So line one, two, three, four, five says every person is multiply multiply bilingual in a more technical sense. Okay, it is like this. So if you want to say what it means by universal bilingualism, universal bilingualism wants to say something like line two of the next paragraph, the last paragraph on page 221 says, a, per a person who switches in this manner from one language to another language. When you switch from, let us say, uh, uh, to Fosha, okay, then he or she has elements of two grammars in one mind, then this is the best. According to the second uh, idea, universal bilingualism. Thomas, line two, Thomas Roper argues that a narrow kind of bilingualism exists in every language. So, in a sense, we all are bilinguals if only we know one language. Why? Because two types of language, one language is av available to you. The best example for you is Fosha and Aragi. Okay? Well, if you actually go to the next page, I mean on page 223 and the first line, this is again important. Line 1 says, the simultaneous existence of two grammars in one mind is necessitated by language development. Okay? Well, in Iran, actually, we see so many people. In Iran, we have a good amount of people who are actually Turks. A good a, a amount of, let's say, bilinguals who are like... A, Arabs, like Khuzestan province in uh, southwest of Iran, southwest of Iran, or the northwest of Iran, in the northwest of Iran actually I've got Turkish, uh, Turkish, okay, northwest, okay, they took, talk two languages, they talk two languages, Turkish and Farsi, Turkey and Farsi, okay, like this. Or the western parts of Iran actually talk Kurdish and at the same time Farsi. This is the best according to this kind of ar argument. Well, well, if you actually go to page 223 and uh, the first paragraph, one line, one, two, three, four four, five lines to the bottom, one, two, three, four, five lines to the bottom of the, uh, the book, uh, bottom of the paragraph. Line five to the bottom says, the typical human mind must entertain, must entertain more than a single grammar, two grammars, okay? So, this is the second argument. I'm going to talk about multiple competence view in my next presentation. Thank you very much.